Hi everybody, this is Shauna from Shauna's Workshop and today we're going to be working on Tri Hackney's Junior Pen Penetration Testing Learning Path and we're in the Content Discovery Module. So I already have um, started the module by um, starting my attack box. There's usually a button right here if the attack box um, wasn't available and then um, I've actually started the machine as well so that we have the IP address. You know when the machine's active when you have the IP address right here. So let's move on to task number one. And um, just to give you an understanding of what I do, I do quick recaps to try to help you get through this as quickly as possible. I will give, if it's word um, answers, I'll give you the word answers to that, but I'm not gonna give you the flags. I'm gonna blur them out, but I'm gonna show you exactly how you can find the flags on your own. And it's actually very easy. So I hope that you do that. So in task number one, what is content discovery? We have, what is the content discovery method that begins with M? The answer is manually. And what is the content discovery method that begins with A? The answer is automated. And then what is the content discovery method that begins with O? That's OSINT, O-S-I-N-T. So now let's move on to task number two. So in this one, they want us to go to the Acme IT support website. This is the web address for it. And I want to show you guys a little trick on Try Hack Me. If you see right here, this little um, icon, you can slide it this way and it has this clipboard feature so that you don't have to constantly be typing things in like this web address when we start the browser over here on the attack box. What you can do is you can um, right click on this and you can just copy the link address and then you can paste it over here onto the clipboard. And so now it exists on the clipboard on the attack box so that once we, here I'm just gonna close this now and I'm gonna open the web browser here in the attack box. And as soon as this opens, I can, whoops, I did it twice. So let me close one of these. I definitely don't need both open. So I can right click here in the web address area and I can go paste and go and it's gonna paste that information from the clipboard. It makes it so much easier than typing everything in. I figured that out eventually after I spent so much time typing things in. So they're asking us here, what is the directory in the robots.txt um, page? And the answer is staff slash portal. Okay, so on task number three, what they want us to do is they wanna to go to this website here. So again, I'm going to open this area, open the clipboard, I'm gonna clear it of what was there before, and I'm gonna right click on this, copy it, I'm going to paste it over here and uh, close it. And then I'm gonna go back into the, um, the web address section, right click, and I'm gonna go paste and go. And so it's taking me to a website that says website coming soon. They're asking us to view the page source. So how we do that is over here with your cursor over here, just right click and then you can go to view page source. And then we're seeing the coding that actually makes up this page. And we're seeing this, um, this link right here for images favicon.ico. Okay, so now that we know um, the address for the favicon, we're gonna use the curl program on the terminal. And I've got the terminal set up here so that you can um, see it a lot better. I've zoomed in a little bit. But there's something that I wanted to show you real quick. So right here, something that people were getting um, confused about, because it says, if you run the following command in attack box, and then it gives you all this information right here. A lot of people were trying to put this entire information right here, but that's actually not what you want to do. So see where it says user at machine, and then the dollar sign, that corresponds to your machine name right here, and it's machine number right there, your user root, and then your IP address right there. So you already have that section, that's what corresponds to yours right there. So actually the only part of this right here that we want to copy is this section right here. So I'm gonna copy it, and I'm going to put it to the clipboard, and it's already, um, let's clear this right here and I'm going to paste it. So now it's on the clipboard. 
So now that it's on the clipboard, I can easily just go right here into the terminal window. I can right click and I can paste. And then I'll just hit enter. And it's gonna give us this code right here. This is the MD5 hex value of the favicon. And another important thing to remember is that um, you might be asking yourself, well, this was the file name for the favicon, so which is this section right here. Why does it have the entire um, web address? And that is necessary because, because this is on the web page already of staticlabs.trihackme.com, um, that's implied in the, you don't have to, when you're doing your coding, you don't have to put that entire address right here. But this favicon's actual web address is this entire thing right here. And so that's why you need it. So back over at this value right here, they want us to then look for it on the OWASP website. So I'm going to uh, highlight that whole information right there and I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to go um, actually I should wait first because on I need to open this database so I'm going to open this in another window and then I'm going to control F and I'm going to whoops it didn't copy for me because I forgot to get it off of the clipboard so let me go back to here and I copy it right there. I'm going to put it onto the clipboard so that I can then copy it again from right there. And then I should be able to go back to the database and in the control F find section, I put that number in here and I came down here and I found the name of the framework that's used on this website to make the website. And that's information that can be used to look for vulnerabilities. Now that you know the framework, you can look for specific known vulnerabilities for that framework. So the name of the framework, uh, what framework did the Flavicon belong to? And that was CGIIRC was the correct answer. So let's go on. I'm going to close, clear this and close this and we'll move on to task. Okay, task number four, manual discovery sitemap. So this is just trying to introduce us to the concept of a sitemap where a website will list all their different areas that are discoverable um, or should be listed for search engines. And sometimes you can find old areas of websites that you might be able to exploit by looking at the sitemap. And so that's what they want us to do here. So again, I'm just gonna right click on the address. I'm going to copy the link address. I'm going to bring it over here to my clipboard, right click and paste. And then now up here in the address URL of the browser, I'm just going to go right click, paste and go, and it'll take us to the site. And now I can move this out of the way. And so this is the same website that we've been looking at from the past module. So they're asking us, what is the path of the secret area that can be found in the sitemap? So right here, let's look at the different areas that we have. We have just the main domain that's right here. We have a news section, an article section, there's other articles, and there's a contact section. And then down here, there's this place called secret area where the E's are spelled with the number three. So that is the information that you wanna put into um, this answer. Now, one thing to note is that at least for me, it only worked if I put the forward slash in there. So it's forward slash S3CR3T dash area. And if you um, think about it, I mean, they didn't ask for the name of the folder, they asked for the actual path. And so the actual path would include the forward, uh, the forward slash, so that kind of makes sense. So now let's move on to task number five. Okay, in this section, it's manual discovery HTTP headers, and they just want us to get comfortable with looking at the HTTP headers of when you go to a website and finding information that might be um, useful to you while that you're there. It's just to kind of get you comfortable with doing this. It's not really teaching you too much about it, but there is a flag there, so this is how you'll go about getting it. So let's open up another terminal window. Let me just... Uh, zoom in here a couple times for you so you can see what I'm doing. And so again, the part that you copy right here is not user at machine because you are root at this IP address. So that doesn't stay there. So you're gonna take this part right here and you'll notice that it has the IP address of the active machine that you're using. So it should be populated with that. 
and um, then I'm just going to take it to our clipboard right here and let me clear that from the last one and I'm just going to paste that information right here and now that is there I can come up here and I can right click and I can go paste and hit enter and let's just close this back up so we can take a look at all this information and we can scroll back up to the header section and let's see if there's any informa um, interesting information up here in the header section. So it says you were connected, the host, it's telling you the server's name. And so they want you to look through here and up right here, there is a flag. And so you're gonna want to copy and paste that flag into the answer over here. And that will help you proceed to the next task. So let's get going on task number six. Okay, so in this task, they want us to take a look at a website to try to find the framework that they're being used and see if we can find anything out about that framework that might be able to be exploited. So the first thing that we're asked to do is to look at the page source for this website. So again, I'm going to right click and copy that link address. I'm gonna open up our little clipboard function here. I'm gonna clear out the last information and put paste it in there. So now that I can just right click and I can go paste and go. And so that takes me to the website that they want us to look at, but they want us to view the page source. So hovering over the page, I'm going to right click and go to view page source. And it says that you'll see a comment at the end of every page with a page load time and also a link to the Lynx Framework website. So if we were doing this on our own, we would have viewed the page source, we'd be trying to find anything that is useful on this page. And then down here at the bottom, there's this comment that it says that this website is using the THM Framework version 1.2 and it gives an actual web address to go find out more information about that framework. So they want us to copy this and they want us to go to that web page to see if we can find anything about it. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to open another tab and I'm just going to right click and paste and go. And so it's just asking us to view the documentation page and it gives us a path of the framework's administration portal which gives us a flag if viewed on the Acme IT Support website. So let's go into their uh, documentation page. And let's see right here, it says documentation is pre-installed. Once you've installed the framework, it says navigate to this path and you can log in with admin and admin. So this shouldn't be here public facing. So this is a problem with the website and this is what is gonna make it hackable. So instead, we want to um, go to the website with this file name at the end. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm gonna go back to the main uh, page that we're at and I'm going to, uh, in the URL at the end, I'm going to paste that. And let's see, I need to take out one of those uh, forward slashes because we don't need it. So that the entire web address that they want us to view is the IP address of the website and that THM framework.login and I'm going to hit enter. And I actually don't need to be view source, so sorry. I shouldn't have done it on this one. I should have done it on this one. So sorry about that at the end. There we go. THM framework from the main website. Hit enter and we have this login and we can go admin and admin and log in and it gives us the flag right there. And so I'm not gonna tell you what that is. You could put that in over there. So let's go on to task number seven. So in task number seven, they're just having you read through some information and understand it. And then they're asking you a question about um, that information. And so one thing that I'll say is for the question, what Google dork operator can be used to only show results from a particular site? The answer is site with a, um, with a colon. 
if you just put site, then it won't work. You have to put site with the colon. So there's a little tip for you. So now moving on to task number eight. This is another one where it's just asking you to read content and it's just making sure that you had reading comprehension and that you remember it. So what online tool can be used to identify what technologies a website is running? And that is the WAP Elizer. So that's the answer right there, W-A-P-P-A-L-Y-Z-E-R. So let's go on to task number nine. Task number nine is another reading comprehension question. And the answer is what website address for the Wayback Machine and that they want you to have the entire web address in there. So make sure to put HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash archive.org forward slash web forward slash and that should get you the correct answer. So let's move on to task number 10. Okay, task number 10 is another reading comprehension question. They want you to read the section and understand it and then the question of what is Git? The answer is a version control system. Version control system will get you the correct answer. So let's move on to task number 11. Task number 11 is also a reading comprehension question. So you're just gonna read this section and then answer the question of what URL format do Amazon S3 buckets end in? And the answer there is dot S3 dot Amazon aws.com. You want to make sure that you actually write it in the correct way that they show you right there um, to get the correct UL, URL answer. So now let's go on to task number 12. Okay, in task number 12, we're going to be using um, some Linux uh, software called Fuff and Derb and Gobbuster, and we're going to try to be getting some information um, using word lists. And so how this is working, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a background. So on your computer, this file and folder already exists. So what's going, what this uh, software is going to do is it's going to compare this word list with the uh, email, or not with the email, with the web address of the Acme IT support website. And it's going to find any um, commonly used folder names so that you can discover more of the website that isn't discoverable on um, public search domains. So let's get this started right now. So again, the user at machine, we're not gonna copy that because that's corresponding to your root user and your IP address of your machine. So we're just going to copy this section right here, copy, and I'm gonna bring it over onto my clipboard, um, clear what was there before so that you can paste it right there. And now that it's pasted, you can go into your terminal window and just right click and paste and hit enter. And it's gonna fuzz that website for you. So let's move this out of the way and let's see if we can answer any of the questions. It's just giving us, um, so let's see, we can see that there's a section called assets. We can see that there's a section called contact. These are the different folders that are on the website. So let's go down here to the questions and see if we can answer them. What is the name of the directory beginning with slash MO? And so whenever they give a slash like that, be pay attention to that because they're giving you specifics of how they want you to enter in the correct answer. Because if we look over here, one that starts with MO, so we see that there is a folder called monthly. If you just put monthly in there, you're not going to get the correct answer. You do have to put that forward slash monthly. And so now they're asking, what is the name of the log file that was discovered? And right here we can see development.log. And so again, to get the correct answer, you need to be putting forward slash development.log and you'll have the correct answer. So that's it. We've actually completed the content discovery module. I hope that this helped you. Um, I didn't really explain it. I'm just trying to help you get through it. Uh, if you have any criticisms or comments, or if you'd like to see anything else from me, just leave a comment below. I hope it helped. You have a good day. Happy hacking. Bye-bye.